like bug hit, bug the shit out of him. Like I was like, you know, I was pretty bitchy about it. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I would take the calendar and be like, look, here's the last time we had sex. Like, aren't your balls hurting? Like I would. Hi. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you so much for joining us here today. I'm looking forward to this conversation. <laughs> oh, me too. Okay. So Hi, Kayla. Oh my gosh, all the people are coming in. Awesome. Yay. <laughs> okay, so hello everyone. I am Sharika Sebi. If you are new here, welcome to Conversations with Sharika. And today I have the wonderful Heather Tucker. She is a sexologist. So if you are not a follower of, of Heather and you follow me, then you probably, maybe you've met her, maybe you haven't. But in either case, we'll be talking about sex today. So if you are uncomfortable, then that's a reason to keep watching. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's actually true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, welcome Heather to the show. She authored the book called Damn You Weight Loss Tattoos, and that is somewhat tied into her work as well as a sexologist. So I'm going to go ahead and allow her to tell you a little bit about herself as well as a little bit about her book. Yes, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be with you all, and I appreciate your time because you are taking the time to watch and, and listen, and that means a lot to both of us. So thank yeah. you so much. So yeah, my name is Heather Tucker, and I am a certified Christian sexologist, which you don't really hear that a lot, the combination of Christian <laughs> and sex. Yeah. Um, and so that's the big reason why I even have felt this calling and have felt, you know, God inviting me to do this work because there's not a lot of people like myself who have done the work of unleashing themselves sexually and still having a commitment to God, still honoring, you know, the relationship with God and being able to figure out a way to have both. Uh, so some people have walked away from the faith because they felt like they couldn't have both. And I'm here to say you can, and Jesus actually designed our lives to have that abundance of sex and relationship with him. So that's me. And yes, if you haven't actually taken the time to follow me yet, I would totally appreciate it. I love getting to know new people. It is like my jam. <laughs> and so if you feel drawn to, you know, get to know each other, I would love it. And I'm so grateful to Sharika for having me as part of her Instagram live. <laughs> it is an absolute pleasure to have you, Heather. I created this show. Anything that I create really is to help people realize that they don't have to stay where they are. They can always move from that place to somewhere that they desire to be. So it's an absolute pleasure to have you today. So, um, Let's get this party started. <laughs> <laughs> let's get spicy, girl. Let's get spicy. <laughs> right, let's get spicy. So the first question I have for you is, who was Heather before she authored um, Damn You Weight Loss Plateaus and before she became a sexologist? Okay. I wish I had this picture of me when I was, it's in the other room, so I, I can show you guys later, but... I have this picture that is in my office office where I actually do like all my writing and everything and it sits right there and it's me looking like Annie that that old movie from the 80s that Annie where she had like the tight perm <laughs> so it's like tight perm huge glasses because I don't know what what age everyone is but I'm a 70s baby I was born in 73 so I grew up you know late 70s early 80s and like the big huge glasses were really in <laughs> and so imagine me with like this tight perm huge glasses shoulders like this I mean like literally I was like slumped down very very shy insecure I could not back then make eye contact not even on if there was video back then I would have never done this never so in school I would walk around like this 
looking at the ground, not making eye contact, very insecure, barely talked to anybody. And uh, some of that was my upbringing, you know, but some of it was just, I didn't feel comfortable with me. Nobody helped me to give myself permission to, to be myself completely and to love all parts of me, even the very sexual parts that started from a very young age. I actually remember all the way back to when I was, I want to say fourth or fifth grade, I had this desire inside of me to kiss this boy that was in school. <laughs> And I remember I went to kiss him, but one of the teachers actually saw me and said, no. Oh, by the way, that was in a Christian school, too. <laughs> so the teacher was like, no, you do not kiss boys. And I'm like, you know, I mean, it just scared me, you know, and I was kind of like in a little bit of a shock. And so my mom got pulled in, the teacher and me, and we had this very deep conversation about what girls should and shouldn't do how girls should act you know and how girls should dress and all of these different things that formed a belief like system over me and so I was walking around for years feeling like I couldn't actually you know be confident because I thought that that meant that I was not being humble you know like how Christianity teaches you know be humble and have your confidence in God and and don't have confidence in self. I mean, that's just, you know, so much of what I heard growing up. So I had no confidence in myself <laughs> and all of these sexual feelings, I had nowhere to express them, you know? And so I stuffed myself down like fourth, fifth grade. I just started to learn because, you know, I was trying to make other people feel comfortable. <laughs> I was like stuffing Heather down stuffing Heather down and I did this for years and years and years before you knew it I had no idea who I was and I was just trying to fit in with the crowd I always wanted to be part of the you know popular crowd but because I was shy and not outgoing and my mom wouldn't let me go to parties <laughs> they didn't really accept me you know so I kind of feel like I didn't really fit in mm -hmm. uh, anywhere you know really um, and then at church, you know, my mom always had us in all the youth camps and, you know, uh, <laughs> hanging out at youth group every single Wednesday. And we would go to church like Wednesday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night, like every single week. And then, you know, when the summer camps came out, I was just always in, you know, immersed in the church. And I was hearing like good Christian girls, girls don't act like that. And good Christian girls don't dress like that. And. Uh, you know, you're not supposed to talk about sex. Everything's hush hush. You had no one to talk to you. Not even my mom would talk to me about sex. All I would get from my mom, grandma, that all the church people I was around is you will find out when you get married. And I was like, that does not help me at all. <laughs> so that's basically like the back part of my story. We can we can go, you know, anywhere you want from there, but just imagine me with those with those curls, that tight perm, uh, very, very big butt still in school. So I didn't even really fit in because like back then the, the thing was, you know, you had to be skinny with a flat butt. <laughs> uh, and so I just didn't I just didn't fit in. I just did it. You know, like I was like, where should I go to fit in? Like, no, I couldn't fit in anywhere. So I was a loner <laughs> a yeah. lot, you know, in school. And then so. you couldn't be yourself either. <laughs> couldn't fit in and you couldn't be yourself either. It's kind of weird how I can almost relate to every single guest I have on here. <laughs> I need to check if something is wrong with that. But um, <laughs> I get it completely because I I grew up Christian. Like, my parents were not Christian. Live with my mom. She didn't start going to church until later on, long, long after I left home. But um, as a youngster, I went to church with my grand, with my godmother, and then when she um, left where we lived, I went by myself, and I went from one church to another church. So I was always going to church, and exactly like you said, you were told you can't behave this way as a young person, you can't dress this way, you can't. And then I don't know what it is about me. I don't feel I didn't filter anything. Right? If they said this is it, that was it, right? So I took whatever they said and I made it 
my thing. And then I, I shrunk too. Over, over time, I shrunk and then I had kids outside of marriage. So you, you can imagine that completely destroyed whatever little um, confidence I had because now I felt unworthy like a yep. sinner and all of, all of that stuff. So I can relate completely to that. But when you, when you wrote your book, was that something that you were going through yourself as well? Well, my book, my first book, because I'm actually writing a second book right now. So my, my first book is more about my weight loss journey because after I got married and we started having kids, I went through uh, a couple of traumatic experiences and I ate my, myself through those. And so I gained over 100 pounds. I actually got up to 235 pounds and I'm only 5'3", so that just goes everywhere, <laughs> you know? And so, you know, that even went more into me not being confident and right. all of that. And so when I figured out a way to no longer eat my feelings, you know, I put that into a book. And, and that was more about, you know, intuitive eating and, and tapping into how God, you know, created our bodies to feel hunger and, and to know when to stop. And so really just getting in tune with, you know, God's original design for like how he made us to, you know, be hungry and, and know when to stop. Right. So that particular book is, is more geared towards uh, women uh, who are struggling with weight, emotional eating, you know, maybe they've had some kind of trauma and they're eating their way, you know, through it, which most of us do at, at some point in our life. It just, it happens. <laughs> Food makes us feel better, <laughs> you know, temporarily until the weight starts coming on. Uh, and then a big part of that book, too, is I delve into how to feel sexy no matter what size that you are. And so that's a, a whole chapter in, in that book. So that, that book is available on Amazon. So you can actually pick it up. It's called Damn You Weight Loss Plateaus. Because <laughs> I literally would stand <laughs> on the scale and I would say, Damn you! Like when I would look at the weight. <laughs> and I'd be so, I'd feel so frustrated and I would like cuss out. <laughs> Oh my God! Or like cuts out the scale, so that's why I actually gave the book that title. Now the second book that I am currently writing is all, and thank you for the love, by the way. <laughs> thank you. Uh, the second book that I'm currently writing is all about how my husband and I, who we actually are going to be celebrating our 21st. A wedding anniversary in just a couple of months but during that time we actually were sexless for 12 years yeah so, I was gonna yeah. get to that next so both of us are Christian you. like we know what God's word says about you know how we're supposed to come together and all that but it was still this long period that we almost divorced a couple of times and so again you know I'm very in tune with God and and him showing me like how to uh, you know get out of certain situations and how to better my own life and so I'm really in tune with like listening and and hearing the intuitive you know hits uh, inside me and so um, I learned how to overcome the sexlessness and now I'm putting it into to a book. So I don't know the date that that's going to come out or whatever, but, you know, stay tuned. You know, again, follow me if you guys have not followed me, because I'm sure I'll make some so sort of an announcement on my Instagram when, when it comes out. <laughs> okay. So I wanted to get to that next. Um, what happened that – so I know you guys have kids. You, you and your husband have kids, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So was that before the sex business or after? Well, <laughs> how this actually started, my husband is my second husband. So I was married before, very abusive marriage that lasted for about four years. Okay. And from that marriage, I have two of my sons. So my older boys who are now 25 and 22, they are from that marriage. Mm -hmm. So. Coming out of that abuse, you know, my trust in men was not so good. Right. And here comes, you know, my husband, and he's just this genuine, on fire for God, wanting to help me because he saw how hard it was, you know, with my ex and how my ex wasn't making child payments. And, uh, you know, we almost got kicked out of our house. And, 
you know, um, he just saw a lot of like the struggle and how I was like beating myself up and blaming myself, you know, for a lot of the things that weren't me, but my ex-husband did a really good job at making me think they were about me when they really weren't <laughs> about me. Uh, now the word is narcissist. Back then I didn't know, you know right. what that was. Right. Yeah. So coming into my relationship with Chuck, I was very broken. I was, you know, had been very abused verbally and, and a couple of times physically. And so with him, with the sex part, it was like when we first got together, I feel like, uh, by the way, my husband was a virgin when I met him. So, and here I was horny all the time and everything. <laughs> and so I, I deflowered him, you know, before uh, we got married. <laughs> Okay. Uh, but he was like ready, you know, he was ready. So our sex life, what it felt like for me is a way to feel loved and, and complete, which I did. I felt very loved and very complete when him and I came together and we had a lot of sex and because I hadn't felt complete and I hadn't felt the attention sexually for a while because my ex actually would withhold it. I just ate it up. Like I wanted sex all the time, you know, with Chuck and I was just like sex, 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 you know, I need to feel loved. I haven't felt love. And it was feeling so good. And I kind of became not kind of, I did. I became very codependent uh, on my husband to feel the love that I had been missing through sex. Right. So that was a lot of pressure because, as you guys know, I mean, you know, not everyone can keep up with the kind of rhythm that, that a person with a high drive, you know, has. Mm -hmm. And my husband, while he loves sex and he enjoys me and, and enjoys my body, his drive was never really as high as mine. But what I've realized over the years is that it wasn't necessarily that I was like horny. It was more that I was using sex to feel the love. So I hadn't actually at that time figured out how that I could feel love by myself, fill up my own cup, right. you know, allow God to fill me up in the parts of me that I felt like there was a lack. Mm -hmm. And so I put a lot of pressure on my husband. And what that did is when we weren't having sex as often as like I thought we should or I wanted <laughs> to, I would start to nag him. I mean, like, bug hit, bug the shit out of him. Like, I was, like, you know, I was pretty bitchy about it. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I would take the calendar and be like, look, here's the last time we had sex. Like, aren't your balls hurting? Like, I would actually say, aren't your balls hurting? Like, aren't you getting blue balls? Like, like don't, you need a, don't you need a release, you know? And, like, when that didn't work, I'm like, how else can I get sex from this man? So then I would go to the Bible <laughs> and there's that one verse in the Bible that says that you shouldn't withhold sex from your, your marriage partner uh, <laughs> unless it's for a time of fasting or prayer. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, hmm, I bet Chuck has not read that verse. And so I'm going to help him to understand that God says we oh should not stop having sex. <laughs> so I, I took the Bible to him and I said, look. Here's mm -hmm. what God says, and you don't want to be disobedient to God, do you? You know, and I would make him feel like super bad. And so all of these different things, I didn't realize I thought I was helping. And of course, I was wanting what I wanted, mm -hmm. sex. Um, but what, it, what I saw it do was pushing further and further and further Boy. away. Mm -hmm. So that was a huge part of the sexlessness. That's, that's one thing. The second part of uh, what was happening is after, after we got married, we tried to have our own baby and we ended up having two miscarriages together. Okay. Very, very, I mean, I'm not even going to go into it because it'll trigger somebody, but like they were very traumatic. They happened around five months. So the baby had already been formed and um, Chuck saw one of them. I'm not going to tell you where. And, um, that really, really did a number on both of us emotionally. And that was around the time when we started to eat together is because we had gone through so much of, you know, that, that tra traumatic stuff. Mm -hmm. And so for a while there, Chuck did not want to have sex either. 
because he was so scared that I was going to get pregnant again and miscarry. And he saw, like, he saw mm -hmm. how hard that it was for me physically and emotionally and even spiritually to recover. Because there was a period of time mm -hmm. when I was so mad at God, Sharika. I'm like, how dare you allow me to have the same miscarriage at the same time frame two times in a row like god yeah. i can't handle this and so i actually walked away from god after the second miscarriage for about six to eight months i was just pissed i stopped praying i stopped reading my bible i stopped going to church and i went really inward i was in a very dark pit of despair like the god or like the bible talks about and it took me almost a year to finally come out of that and to and to see you know that there is a reason for everything and that god's going to bring good you know from everything even though like i didn't understand it at the time mm -hmm. and then that's when our joshua who's our third baby uh finally came you know to this planet and he just turned 17 and he is like the biggest sweetheart sharika and so now looking back i'm like wow like if those two miscarriages didn't happen i wouldn't have josh and he's been like our miracle baby and the biggest you know, love bug of, I mean, he has helped to bring us together on more times than one. And so God knew that we were going to need him, you know, while we were going through our sexlessness to still feel the love, you know, for right. each other, even though we weren't having like sex. So there's a lot of like transitional parts that, that we went through. And it's not just one thing that helped us to overcome it. It's several things you know, that it turned into like this big, oh my God, you know, and so now we're five years on the other side. And, you know, while we don't have sex every day, which, you know, of course I would love, <laughs> uh, I would love it every single day. Just give it to me, you know, but now I don't actually see, you know, when we don't have sex, I'm not taking it in as rejection because it right. never was meant like that from Chuck. Now I see it for what it is. He just might be tired or whatever. So now, you know, we might have it a couple times a week. Sometimes we have it a couple times a day, but I don't stress on the frequency anymore. Now I'm just like, you know, we, we focus on love in different areas, like our spiritual connection, our emotional connection, our mental connection, and of course our sexual, you know, connection when it does, you know, happen. But it's greater now than it has ever been. And I will honestly say, we both like when we come together it's so much more powerful of an experience now because we've been through so much yeah we literally feel our souls connecting and like the orgasms are so much stronger and like my husband is enjoying sex and he's more comfortable with his body you know as well so it's just it's an amazing thing when you are in a relationship with somebody and you grow you know together in this way yeah, uh, that, that's, that's a powerful story there, Heather. I mean, that would have destroyed a lot of relationships. Yep, I mean, it almost did for us. <laughs> I, I threatened him a couple times. I'm like, if you don't start to give it to me, bye. <laughs> so oh my I did. God. Oh, wow. <laughs> but thank God I didn't, you know, thank God I didn't. So, so, so out of the pressure from the loss of a child and from... Um, you overdoing it led him to kind of shut down, correct? Yes. Okay. So how how did you deal with that? Because since you were the one who always wanted to to be having sex, how did you handle that? Well, because I wasn't getting it from my husband, you could probably guess where I ended up going to, which oh, wow. I which I think a lot of men and women go to porn, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not proud of it. You know, but I felt like I was connecting with people, you know, uh, when I wasn't actually connecting with my spouse in person. So it sounds kind of like weird to say, but I felt like I was with those people sometimes. And it, it actually filled me up a little bit and kind of kept me uh, feeling my sexuality and still being able to tap into my own orgasm and... Uh, I mean, they say if you don't use it, you lose it. So I know how important it is <laughs> to make sure that you have regular orgasms. I mean, that's, uh, you know, whether you're single or not, you know, you should be tapping in. <laughs> okay. Um, and so okay. I know the importance. <laughs> you heard it. <laughs> <laughs> I know the importance. And so I did that through porn. 
uh, it made me feel emptier, you know, unfortunately, but that's, that's one of the things that I did. Another thing that I did was, you know, I had a conversation with my husband. This was like towards the end of the 12 years. So mm -hmm. not even that long ago, this was like six years ago or something. He had somebody that he knew that was in a similar situation as us where the woman wanted it more than Monday. the guy that he knew. Mm -hmm. And they talked about and figured out a way to have an open relationship. And so I had never heard of that before. But when we were really struggling and Chuck was just not interested, like, at all, He's like, what about an open relationship? And at that time, I didn't know what that was. And so he had told me that, you know, someone he knew mm -hmm. was doing that. And that it was helping them and helping the woman, you know, to get what she needed sexually. And then they were still able to come back and stay, you know, married. And so, you know, my husband said, what if we did that? He's like, my only concern is I don't, I'm real scared that you're not going to love me anymore and you're going to walk away. And so he asked me, is there a way that you can go out and get your physical, you know, needs met with, with other people and then still be able to come, you know, back with me and, and have some time with me when I'm ready and, and still, you know, stay married. And so I said yes, because, of course, I didn't know <laughs> if I could. So, you know, here I did, Sharika, I went out. And because I had not been touched in so freaking long, you better believe that I went crazy. I mean, I was having so much sex, Sharika. <laughs> I was having so much. <laughs> I never had a hoe phase, but now I have had a hoe phase. So, you know, it was a lot of fun, you know. In the beginning, it was a lot of fun. I felt like I had been, you know, awakened. Mm -hmm. you know, again. Right. And I was being shown that my body still worked <laughs> and that I could still turn other people on and, and all of that. And I felt wanted and desired and all of that. And mm -hmm. so I lived in that lifestyle for about nine months. Wow. And what I realized is while the beginning was fun, Towards like four or five months in, I started to feel more empty and I started to notice that the connection that I was really craving when I would have sex with people wasn't happening with these outside partners. Like I was, I was thinking, okay, like if I go outside my marriage and I have sex with other men, you know, I'm going to be able to feel that same kind of soul connection, you know, that I do with my husband. And I kept looking for that and it never happened. Like it never mm -hmm. happened. And so it really started to be this empty experience. And so I decided, you know, after about nine months to just stop it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I came back home. I had like this coming home <laughs> moment and <laughs> I said, Chuck, I don't think that's for me. <laughs> I'm like, I tried it <laughs> and I don't, I just don't think it's for me. And so, you know, I told him I'm done. Like, I just really, really want to be, you know, just with you mm -hmm. and, you know, to focus on the soul connection and, you know, this amazing feeling that we have when we do come together as husband and wife. Yeah. Also, um, is it okay to say, like, if anyone has a question that they want to ask, can they put it in the comment? Okay. Sure, they can. And thank you guys so much for, for, for joining us here. Um, as well, thank you so much for being open and for sharing because yeah. I know that there is somebody out there who will hear this story and go like, oh, wow, that's me. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for sharing. So now I know that your husband was okay. He okayed you going out and he okayed you sharing yourself with other people. But did it affect him any at all? How, well, should I say, no. How did it affect him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that actually is a better question because it will. Like, it actually will. What <laughs> the, the weird thing is, is he said when he gave me, like, the permission, you know, because, you know, if you, if, if as a couple you do decide to have an open relationship or, 
you know, open yourself up to polyamory or whatever, like you do have to make sure that you have very, very open communication. You want to make sure no one's getting jealous and, all, you know, all of those kinds of things because, you know, the last thing that you want is is for your personal relationship to get it impacted because that should always be number one no matter, you know, what, if you guys decide right. to, to do that. So Chuck said he would be fine and I believed he'd be fine and then I thought my I would be fine, <laughs> you know. So... Chuck, I actually noticed that Chuck wanted me less. Yeah. So we had less sex once I started to go out. When I came home, it actually took us a little while, like a few months. I mean, even for me, I had to get used to my husband's body again, you know, uh, the way that we fit, you know, together and, and the way that we moved, you know, together sexually because when I was out, I wasn't really having as much sex with my husband then. So it, it was like this relearning each other and learning how to trust each other again. And, you know, I, I had to learn how to let go of the resentments, you know, that I had for all those years of him not wanting me. And then I also had to, I also had to um, trust that, you know, we wouldn't go sexless again because and and still to this day that that can be a fear that creeps in because it's like once you live through that the and you know how horrible <laughs> it feels to like be in yeah. it like the last thing that you want is for that to happen again so you know a lot of my inner work and my self reflection work is you know trusting god that everything's going to be fine and that he has our back and that he wants our marriage to work and that we're going to keep having the best sex that we've ever had, you know, better than when we first got together. So I have to speak to myself a lot in that way, uh, even when those little fears, you know, do come in, which they do. They, st they still can sometimes. Yeah, it's amazing. And then I imagine you were coming from uh, an abusive, loveless relationship. And then you came into this one and you were having sex and then and then your husband suddenly didn't want to be with you, so to speak. I imagine that must uh, have even even um, affected your self-esteem and how you felt about yourself even on a deeper level. Yep, you're right. Yeah, I'll tell you, the first time it happened, it was after we had Josh. So now we had the, you know, we went through the miscarriages, we had Josh, mm -hmm. and I was released, you know, to have sex again, and I was, like, really excited. <laughs> I'm like, let's go. <laughs> and so I approached my husband the same way that always used to work before, which, mm -hmm. you know, for him, he loves it when I'm on top. And so I, you know, climbed over his legs and I was doing the same things, you know, like moving my body the same way, going to kiss him, like letting him know, you know, that I was turned on and I was like ready. Mm -hmm. And I still remember this, Sharika. I was on him, okay, and I was doing all, like, you know, my best Heather moves, <laughs> basically. <laughs> <laughs> and he took me, he took me, he lifted me off of him, and he put me to the side. Wow. Yeah. And when that first happened, I was like, huh? What's what wrong? Happened? Yeah. I was like, what just happened? Are you okay? Because he had never done that before. And he's like, uh, my stomach's upset. Uh, he's like, I, I'm not able to do that right now. I thought, like, oh, all right, you know, no problem. But then a couple days later, I tried again, mm -hmm. and he he just kept pushing. He just kept like literally, he would actually be touching my body and like pushing me away, or like this way, pushing me away, you know, from him. Mm -hmm. And um, I felt the most rejected that I have ever felt because here's a man who said and made a commitment in front of God and people that he would always love me and cherish me and want me and desire me and never be the one to reject me and all the things that we promised each other and here he was being the actual one that was doing that and yeah. I felt rejected and abandoned all the time like for those 12 years I cannot begin to tell you how many times I cried myself to sleep, Sharika. I mean, it was awful. 
And then when I had my weight loss journey, Chuck was not ready, which I go into that in my book. He, he still has not lost his weight, by the way. <laughs> um, so I decided I can't live, you know, as a bigger person. This is not, it didn't feel right for me. I mean, some people it does for them, but like inside myself, I just didn't feel good. I was sick all the time and I just didn't feel good. So I knew that, you know, I needed to go on that journey for myself, which I did. And I lost over 106 pounds and I was on social media and I was like posting my before and like progress pictures. And at the time I was selling a weight loss product. So it was like one of the requirements to put up, you know, the comparison pictures right. so that mm-hmm. people would want to like buy what you're using or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so as I'm posting up these pictures, I'm getting, you know, messages from men. Oh my God, they would say, your husband must want you day and night. Little did they fucking know that when I got messages like that, I would be bawling my eyeballs out because they had no idea. Because in their mind, they're thinking, wow, look at all this work that you're putting in. It must make your husband want you even more. Mm -hmm. But he (laughs) he wanted me less almost. It was like so weird. Yeah. So it was really, really, really difficult. And I walked around in that, you know, rejection for so long that towards the end of the 12 years, I just decided, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to open myself up. And I started flirting back, you know, and I flirted and and I'm a really good flirt, by the way. Like if I want a person, I will flirt like no, like no one's business. (laughs) I'm really good at it. So I did that for a long time. Nothing happened sexually because, you know, most of these people were far away and all that you know, in different countries or, you know, different states and stuff. But Mm -hmm. it it filled me up a little bit. It kind of gave me that ego boost, you know, that was missing from my husband, you know, not wanting me. So I actually did that for a couple of years before, you know, my husband and I actually had that conversation about the open marriage. So it was like a, (laughs) it was like a slow transition into where I finally (laughs) had sex with other people. Whoa, whoa, and <laughs> it, 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 it's funny because you hear that and most times when you hear a story like this, it's the woman who doesn't want to have the sex. A lot of yep. times you hear it. So hearing it from you, I know I've heard it where it's the, the woman who wants to have the sex, but I've never heard it to this degree. I don't know if it still exists because I actually know of a case where it's the, the, the woman who does want to have the sex and the man is kind of like an energizer bunny or something like that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, I've heard of those situations, and I'm like, why can't that be my situation? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we're paired with the people who are supposed to help us grow the most. <laughs> that, that's why it can't be you. I but, agree. Um, <laughs> but um, at what point, though, did you begin to um, feel sexified? Even though um, you were going through what you were going through, at what point did you start to do the work on yourself and understand that um, you're going to have to learn to love you and not other people and not depending on the, not depend on the flirting, not depend on your husband to feel sexy, to feel loved, to feel appreciated? Because that's a hell lot of rejection. I don't know if I could have gone to all of that and made it so safely, you know? Mm-hmm. That's so more power to you. Um, I mean, yeah. that's amazing. But at some point in time, the fact that you're sitting here talking to us and sharing with us means that at some point in time, you had to learn to love yourself. You had to learn to feel sexy without someone else appreciating that. So when did that begin to happen and how did you transition to that phase? Yeah, well, I had already lost my weight, so I had already had my weight off for 10 years already. Mm-hmm. And um, and so I already was, like, in my small form, my smaller form. Mm-hmm. And I thought that if I lost weight that my husband would want me more and, like, I would feel more loved and stuff. So I kind of, like, initially went on that journey because I thought it was my weight that was the thing that mm-hmm. was turning him off. Well... 
I actually saw that wasn't it. So, <laughs> um, so after about 10 years of me working on myself and my body, this is about five years ago, I want to say, uh, I remember, cause again, remember from the beginning, you know, if you've been here the whole time with us, you know, you, you heard me say that I felt in my, in me, a sexualness like I had felt it already from like fourth or fifth grade and so that has always been in me I have always been a sexual I mean we all are a sexual being but you know some people are more connected to it than others and I just have always felt that connection but because I had stuffed it down for so long uh, it was like I forgot I mean I knew it was there in my brain but like I didn't have the energy part of feeling it not until about five years ago. And I really started to have these sensations. And a lot of time it would be when I was praying or when I was reading my Bible or when I'd listen to a, a worship song or uh, a mainstream song where they would talk about being confident in who you are. Oh, you know what song I really, really love that really expresses this is Demi Lovato has a song called Confident. And it, it has a similar words that are very in line almost with my, my story. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when I hear that song, I'm like, whoa, because that really explains it. It's like I started to, to really tap into this fact and truth that God on purpose created Heather as, you know, he meant to <laughs> on purpose, mm -hmm. uniquely made, you know, yeah, with the desires is. for sex, yeah, right. with, with the desire to want to connect sexually. Mm -hmm. And, oh, I'm, I'm almost going to cry right now. But like when I read Psalm 139, and I read the part that, that talks about how God on purpose knits us, you know, he's sewn us, knits us together in our mother's womb. When I read that and I thought about my sexuality and I thought, okay, if God is the designer of us, so of course you have to believe in this, you know, for it to make sense. But if you do, because <laughs> I know not everyone believes this. So if you do and you believe that God originally designed us and he's putting us together on purpose, then that means that every single desire, every passion that we have, that actually came from God. We're meant to tap into that. Yeah. And we're actually doing ourselves a disservice, right. not only to ourselves, but to the world. Because if we're not tapped in, then we're not being fully ourselves, which then makes the impact, you know, on the world in the way that God has, you know, called us to. And yeah. so I felt the bubbling up about five years ago and I was so used to stuffing it down, but there was this one day and I remember I am not going to stuff this part of me down anymore. If it's there and God created this on purpose, I'm going to get to know this part of myself. Okay. And so I became open and I said, God, I open myself up to believe that I can be a born again Christian, so on fire for you, love you so freaking much. They look like. But I can also, at the same time, be a sexually charged being, fully sexual, fully feminine, mm -hmm. fully empowered, you know, fully sensual. And because I became open, it was like God just poured and did the whole floodgate thing. <laughs> and I got to this other side, and it was like I felt God saying to me, Heather, I've been waiting for you to get here. And now that you have, I need you to go and help other women with this. Because there's way too many women on this planet that have been told that they can't be godly and sexual at the same time. Yeah. Their marriages are struggling. They're getting divorced. And they're just struggling. And, and they don't have anyone to talk to about any of this kind of stuff. No one. Because the church is still, to this day, 
not open for the sex conversation. I even went and tried to talk to my pastor about this, Sharika. I said, look, I'm, a couple of my clients that are right here local, mm -hmm. they've come to me because they see the work that I'm doing and how I'm helping you know, Christian women to break free into their sexuality and to be comfortable in their own skin and, you know, dance sexy in front of their husbands and strip tease and all the things. Okay, all the things. And I said, and, and there's no one in this church that's teaching this. I would love, you know, to be able to come and just have a real small women's group, kind of like a study, you know, and, and be able to help other women so that, you know, we can prevent people from getting divorced because right. there's, a, there's such a high divorce rate in, in the Christianity community, you know, and he said no. So, I mean, still to this day, the church is not open. And so I thought, you know what, if, if he said no, <laughs> to me, that means there's even more of a need if my own church is, is, you know, still saying no. And that's around the time when I got onto Clubhouse. So almost a year ago. <laughs> and I just started talking about it and talking about it. And I started to talk about it on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and all places. And I did get a lot of flack. I still do that. Some of the Christian community says I'm sending people to hell and, you know, you're, op you're helping them to open up demonic forces and all, all the things. So I still hear stuff like that. But I know for those people that say things like that, they're just not open and they're not to that place yet that I had gotten myself to. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of work that has to be done in the area of, you know, disassembling, uh, you know, old belief systems and uh, establishing, you know, new belief systems that are actually based on truth. Right. You know, and that takes a lot of inner work to actually uproot, you know, those old belief uh, systems. Very, okay. very difficult, 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 difficult long sometimes you know work but it is so worth it you know to work with someone like myself to help you get there because on the other side oh my god like the freedom experience that you feel inside your soul there is absolutely nothing like it on the planet when you can be fully yourself fully sexual and still love jesus and go out and do your thing and not care anymore about what anyone else is going to think because you know that God approves, you know, you without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, without. Okay, so I know you have to go shortly, so let me see if I can get two more questions in here. Okay, okay so this, this topic is really taboo for, for Christians because as you brought it up, I don't remember if I have, I've got, I've been, I went to church for most of my life and most of my early adult life, and I can't remember ever hearing a positive conversation about sex unless they're talking about people being married, right? Yep. So, so it's a taboo for people who go to church, people are Christian, people are unmarried and all of that stuff. They don't even want to hear the topic talked about, right? So someone who is in a place where you were in terms of, not in terms of being sexless, but in terms of but having the confidence, knowing that being sexy is okay, knowing that desiring sex as a woman is okay, what would you, in, in the shortest possible time, because we don't have a lot. <laughs> I know. Well, I love to talk, as you can tell. <laughs> yeah, and I have tons of questions. But how would you um, advise someone as to how to, to, to even begin to, to free themselves and release that sexuality and start to feeling confident because I know it can be quite tasking. So how does, how does someone begin that journey? Yeah. Okay, one, you need to go follow me on Clubhouse because I talk about this shit all the time. Go join my club, Sexless to Sexified. I'm actually going to be there in a little over an hour. We're going to talk about this very thing. <laughs> Uh, the third thing is go read Song of Solomon because that really, really helps me. Song of Solomon and then quite a few verses in Proverbs. It all, like you'll find a lot in there where it shows, you know, women being fully confident and fully sexual and being the one to initiate and, and go after the man that they love. So, you know, you just need to find those biblical examples for yourself. Th those are where I have found them. Uh, I'm sure there's more. You know, I don't know the whole Bible, you know, uh, so look, look, you know, just read the Bible and, and pray and ask God and he's going to show you. Right, right, right. Okay. 
So um, I want to choose my question wisely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I know that um, what are some of the ways outside of um, reading the Bible and seeing that it's okay for a woman to be sexy and it's okay? Because trust me, this is something that I have had to deal with myself. So I understand and I know what it's like. I don't know. It's crazy. Almost every guest I have on here, I can't relate to it. <laughs> don't know what that is. Maybe this is for me too. But, but anyways, um, what are some of the steps someone can take um, physically, not just by reading the Bible, to begin to, to feel that sexiness? Uh, because as women, we're told... To go like this? Oh, yeah. Ah. <laughs> yeah, like that. To be able to touch yourself? Woo! Uh -huh. <laughs> I feel confident because we're told that sex is not a good thing. You're not supposed to be sexy <laughs> as a young girl. You know, you're not supposed to dress sexy. You're not supposed to look sexy. So yep. what's step, say step one, two, and three that someone can take yeah. um, in well, order to feel that way? Like I said, it takes work. And for some people, this might not be as hard. It really just depends on how much resistance that you have, you know, to it. Yeah. So you can hire someone like myself with, that will take you through the process uh, but if you don't have a lot of resistance and you're pretty open, like maybe you've done some work already on yourself and you don't feel as restricted uh, sexually, but maybe you're like, yeah, I just need a little bit more confidence. <laughs> uh, what you can do is just, you know, find some affirmations that speak to you and, you know, look in, at yourself in the mirror and, and speak, you know, to yourself with those affirmations every single day. So that's one thing. Uh, the next thing, and this is my personal favorite, <laughs> is I love to take dance classes. And so oh, for me, right now. <laughs> yeah, for me, sensual dance classes where you're given permission to touch yourself and looking at the mirror, touching. I mean, of course, you got clothes on, so you're not naked. But, you know, you get you go in these classes and they're showing you, you know, moves on how to get comfortable touching your body, how to, you know, move to the beat, how to get comfortable in your own skin, like no matter what your size is. Uh, and sometimes they got you wearing heels. Sometimes they're having you in tennis shoes. So, you know, the classes can be different, whatever, you know, level <laughs> um, that you're at. Um, but that is for me has been one of the ways that I continue because this is a process you don't just break free from all of this and then you're done like you still have to do the daily work every day because when you have a limiting belief uh, it can be very easy to go back oh, yeah, you know, to yeah. that because it's so comfortable and you've been living mm -hmm. in that space for so many years so right. you have to you know do the work every day to make sure that you don't go backwards I've had to do that with my eating and my fitness to keep off, you know, the hundred pounds I still have, you know, yeah. uh, and my body can pack it on like no one's business, man. You should see me at Thanksgiving. I look pregnant <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> so, I mean, you just have to develop these habits and they got to do them for life. So with mm -hmm. like the sexual part of us, for me, I, I speak these affirmations. Oh, which by the way, if you go to my Instagram and you tap on my link tree, the very first like little thing that you can tap on, it says, uh, I think it says something about sexual confidence and sexual health. I can't remember, but anyway, tap on that first one. There's a $10 offer there. And I actually give you seven different ways on how to continue this work. So there's sexual affirmations in there. There's how to love yourself naked in front of the mirror. Uh, there's dancing, like I actually teach you dance. There's uh, a 21 day self love challenge. There's just a lot. So I do this work myself every day, and then I now, you know, help other women to tap in and, and continue to do the work. Because, like I said, you're never going to be done. You just yeah. won't. <laughs> That's true. You never done. It's a continuous process, it's a journey. Yes. All right, Heather has to go, but this was a wonderful conversation and a high opener, and I hope that you guys did get some value from this. Thank you so, so much for joining us, and thank you so much, Heather, for being here with us today. This video goes up on my YouTube channel next week. I'm going to share it out with a ton of people, especially some Christian ones. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> 
So I hope we start a revolution. But thank you again. Yes, man, that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, I know. Thank you so much for being here. And um, as I promised, this show is designed to help you live fully, you know, a full life. And yes, that includes sex. Because you, that's a part of your, that's a part of your design, a part of your DNA, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's not nasty. It's not taboo. It's not shameful. And um, for for so long, I thought it was. So mm -hmm. this is gonna help a lot of people. And Heather, thank you once more. So guys, if you're not following thank you. me, <laughs> you're welcome. If you're not following me as yet, please go ahead and give me a follow. Every week I have an amazing guest here to talk about something that has to do with all of our development. So follow me if you're not following me as yet. And you can purchase a copy of my book. It's called An Introduction to Freedom. And it's about personal development as well. Self-love is in here. Gratitude, forgiveness, and awareness. It, it deals with so many different things. And you can book a free clarity session in, at the link in my Instagram as well if you so desire, if you want to talk about getting to your next level. All right, so Eva, thank you once more for being here. And thank you guys so, so much for, for the support. Those of you who join me here every week, it's an absolute, what do I say? honor to have you pleasure every week. pleasure it's <laughs> an absolute pleasure <laughs> it's an absolute pleasure to have you here with me every week um and thank you so much for the support so until next week i think we'll be talking about business and money and so on so feel free to join me next week but until then have yourself a wonderful rest of thursday evening and either have yourself some amazing sex <laughs> You too, girl. You too. All right. All right. Love you. All right. Love you too. Bye. Bye. Thank you guys so much.